photographers, this is the new Fujifilm X-T3, and if you've watched my review, you know I was impressed. But how does it stack up to the nearly new X-H1? I'm going to do my best to cover every detail, and sometimes that means if the two are the same, I may not mention it. Now the X-H1's third generation X-Trans APS-C sensor has a 24 megapixel resolution, and the X-T3's fourth generation X-Trans APS-C sensor has 26 megapixels. And according to Fujifilm, the X-T3 also has a new processor. I'll start outside with the physical details and then go inside to provide you with a side-by-side -side menu feature comparison. The X-H1 is the bigger SIB. 7 mm wider, 5 mm taller, and 4 mm deeper. The X-H1's grip is larger and easier to grasp. At 673 grams with memory card and battery, the X-H1 weighs 134 grams, 25% more. The X-H1 is available in black, the X-T3 all black, and black with silver accents. For me, the X-T3, particularly with the silver accents, seems to capture the style of traditional rangefinder cameras, while the X-H1 is a bit nondescript industrial in design. The X-T3's name badge is in front, the X-H1 is a little more discreet on the back panel. Across the top, the X-T3 has ISO, shutter, and EV dials. The ISO dial has a collar to set drive modes, the shutter's collar selects the meter mode. The X-H1's ISO and shutter dials, including the collars, are identical. A small detail, the X-H1 has a medium burst position that's missing from the X-T3, which instead has a multi-exposure position not on the X-H1. The X-H1 has no EV dial. Instead, there's an EV button. Press it and turn the back dial to adjust the setting. And the X-H1 has a sub-monitor panel to display settings and status, which is helpful to see battery and card status when it's off. There's a button to alternate between black and white display options. The X-T3 shutter button can accommodate an external release cable. The shutter on the X-H1 is not only a different design, but it's extraordinarily sensitive by comparison. It's on the forward slope of the grip. It's slightly more ergonomic, for me anyway. The X-T3 has a function button behind the shutter. Buttons on the X-T3 are generally flat. The X-H1s have rounded domes. The X-H1's Q button to access the quick menu is on the thumb rest. The X-T3 is above the focus joystick, I prefer the X-T3's configuration for this. On the right side, the AEL buttons are the same, but AF-ON has turned into AFL and moved to the right of the dial where it's easier to reach on the X-T3. They can, of course, be customized, so functionality is, or can be, the same. The back panel controls are the same, but more compactly positioned on the X-T3. The LCDs are the same resolution with the same articulation and push to release for the portrait mode low angle position. The viewfinder is identical, although the X-H1's eye cup is slightly larger. The diopter dial on the X-T3 pulls out to adjust and locks in place. There's no lock on the X-H1. The left side port cover is removable on the X-T3, handy for video work. On the X-T3, a headphone port has replaced the X-H1's remote port. There's a hidden door on the right side for the remote. I nearly missed this one. On the X-H1, if you want a headphone jack, you'll need the optional battery grip. On the X-H1, USB 3. On the X-T3, USB-C. The X-H1 comes with an HDMI cable clip. The X-T3 does not, nor does it have a screw port for one. The right side ear lug for a carry strap is further back on the X-H1 where it's less likely to get in the way of your shutter finger. Both support UHS-2 type cards in both slots and they use the same 126S battery, although battery life is rated about 15% higher on the X-T3, 390 compared to 340 images. An optional battery grip is available for both. The X-H1s add some functionality to video and a headphone jack. Fuji claims an increased 0.1 second of startup time, 0.3 seconds on the X-T3. 
ISO settings are the same, but the X-T3 adds a lower ISO 160 on the dial and 80 using the low setting. On the X-T3, I'm working with firmware 1.02. On the X-H1, I've upgraded to 1.2. Both can do a firmware update using the Fujifilm remote app. And I've reset both cameras. For image size, the X-T3's resolution is higher, so slightly higher resolution for each size, and as a result, slightly fewer images on the 64GB card I have installed. The X-T3 adds a new monochrome adjustment setting, which applies to Acros and black and white. An amber to blue color shift can be added. Now you can see this and other features in action in my full review. Now the X-T3 also has a color chrome effect setting to enhance shadow color reproduction. White balance remains at the bottom of screen 1. On the X-T3, the dynamic range settings have been moved to screen 2. While the settings are the same, on the X-H1 it takes an ISO of 400 to enable DR200, while an ISO of 800 is required for DR400. On the X-T3, DR200 is available at ISO 320, 400 at ISO 640. On the X-T3, custom settings now include the black and white tone and the color chrome effect. The X-H1's focus area screen distinguished between phase and contrast points. All points on the X-T3 are phase. The X-H1 has 91 focus points on a 7x13 grid. The X-T3 has 117, 9x13. And the detailed focus screen has 425 on the X-T3, only 325 on the X-H1. And the X-T3 reaches more points at the top and the bottom of the scene. The X-T3 adds a fourth manual focus assist mode, digital microprism, which will certainly appeal to some photographers. The X-H1's burst modes range from 8 to 14 frames. On the X-T3, the mechanical supports 8 and 11, then 20 with the electronic. Using a 1.25 crop, the electronic shutter can also be set to 10, 20, and 30 frames. It's nice to have the notes on screen with the shutter settings and buffer capacity, although one more round of proofreading would have been helpful. On the X-H1, low is 3, 4, and 5. On the X-T3, also 5.7. Not sure I understand the reason for that setting. On the X-T3, there's a sports finder mode. It takes a cropped image, but you can see outside the crop for a faster reaction time. It only works with the mechanical shutter. The pre-shot setting works with high-speed burst and the electronic shutter. It saves about 10 frames from just before the shutter was fully depressed. It buffers from the time you soft press the shutter. When an OIS lens is mounted, the X-H1's in-body stabilization has the same menu settings as the X-T3, which does not have in-body stabilization. On the X-T3, auto ISO settings are on screen 2, and on the X-T3, default settings can be set as low as 160, so that setting is available for auto ISO. With the X-H1, only mount adapter settings 5 and 6 were customizable, on the X-T3, they all are. On the X-H1, multi-exposure is a menu selection. On the X-T3, it's a setting on the drive caller. The X-H1's video menu has four pages, five on the X-T3. On the X-T3, the independent video settings are identified with an icon. On the X-H1, the term movie is appended to show it's a video-only setting. Some of the settings are reorganized on this screen. For example, white balance and dynamic range are switched. The X-T3 supports both H.264 and H.265 compression options, only H.264 and not explicitly on the X-H1. The X-T3's H.265 mode has two compression options, all intra, which records more data per frame for easier editing, and long gop, which provides simpler playback decompression. In H.264, the 4K cinema resolution supports 24 frames on the X-H1. The X-T3 also supports 30 frames. In 4K UHD resolution, 30 frames are supported on the X-H1, up to 60 on the X-T3. 
The X-H1 supports a 720 resolution mode, the X-T3 does not. In HD 1080, the X-H1 goes to 24 frames in 17x9 and 60 frames at 16x9 with data rates 200 megabits. On the X-T3, both aspects support 60 frames with 200 megabits. Now, I won't detail all of the X-T3's combinations and permutations, but with H.265 all intra, 24 and 30 are supported up to 400 megabits, with long gop up to 60, but only to 200 megabits. The X-H1 limits recordings. For example, Cinema 4K is limited to 15 minutes. While those limitations increase to 30 minutes with the optional battery grip, most modes on the X-T3 are limited to 30 minutes without the grip. There are exceptions. H.265 Long Op 60 is limited to 20 minutes. As with stills in video mode, the X-T3 has a color tone adjustment, and the X-T3 has inter-frame noise reduction. Although both have the same 7x13 video focus grid, the X-T3s are all phase detect. On the X-H1, only the center are. The X-H1 has movie pre-AF, the X-T3 does not. On the X-H1, only face detect is available in video mode. All face eye detect settings are available on the X-T3. And the X-T3 can output 4K to SD and HDMI simultaneously. The X-H1, it's one or the other. The X-T3 has zebra settings for exposure assist. Stripes can face left or right. The level can be set from 50 to 100 in five-step increments. On the X-T3, the My Menu setting incorporates the new menu items like black and white color tone and color chrome. One display custom setting has been added to the X-T3, Guidance Message. The X-H1 has settings for the submonitor panel. And the X-T3 has contrast settings for the LCD, including dark ambient. On the function button customizations, I think the default options are different and with seven pages on the X-T3, six on the X-H1, the additions are, predictably, color chrome effect, sports finder, pre-shot, and zebra, as well as AE lock, AF lock, and combined lock, and then AF on, AWB lock, and aperture setting. For command dial setting, as there is no EV dial on the X-H1, there's a setting to assign it. The low ISO settings are slightly different, slightly lower values on the X-T3, as 160 is available on the dial. The X-H1 has an EV button setting. The X-T3 has a WB lock mode. Everything else is the same. Did I get everything? I know that you may have noticed things I missed, so please use the comments below to let me know what you found. And I do reply to relevant questions and civil comments, and I enjoy interacting with you. So please shoot until your memory card is full and your battery is empty. And if this channel and my content pleases you, it would please me to have you as a subscriber. Thanks.